Boruto is better than Hunter x Hunter is a real quote my cousin said to my face. This is a wild statement, and if I had to hear it, so do you too. Statements like this are enough to spark a civil war between toxic Hunter x Hunter fans and toxic Boruto fans, and pretty much every anime fan in general. Most people would probably want to fight after hearing this, but thankfully I'm not a diehard Hunter x Hunter fan, so I didn't have to fight my cousin. I'm probably really lucky, because I was probably gonna get my ass beat because I think Boruto fans are some of the scariest people out there. I mean, this is easily the most intimidating tweet I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, actual shivers down my spine intimidating. After being peer pressured for years from my family member, I reluctantly decided to give Boruto a shot despite telling myself I'd never do so. Because that Hunter x Hunter comparison was the last straw, and I just had to know for myself if Boruto was any good or not. And while I definitely don't think it is as good as Hunter x Hunter, and I have a lot of problems with Boruto, I'd be lying if I didn't say Boruto does have its moments that I enjoyed, and it's actually alright. Much like a lot of people, I grew up on the original Naruto. It's still probably one of my favorite animes I've ever watched, all the way back when I was 8 years old when I first saw it air on the legendary Toonami. This anime quite literally changed me. Naruto in episode 1 was the first naked body I ever saw in my life. It awakened something in me, sending me down a path of degeneracy I was never able to recover from. I'm someone that thought Naruto should have 1000% ended after Shippuden. I'd probably go even further and say it should have ended even before Shippuden. Because while Shippuden definitely does have its moments that are genuinely fantastic, nothing hits the same as the original Naruto for me. Getting into Porto can be extremely intimidating. For pretty much everybody who graduated high school, no one has time to watch 200 episodes of an anime. So I decided to watch Boruto the optimal way. And by watch, I mean I just read the manga, because it's only 60 chapters right now, and I watched the fight scenes and various other clips on YouTube. Boruto is a series that for sure gets a lot of hate, and I'd hate to say justifiably so, but the first few arcs in the series really don't do it any favors at all. It's kind of the exact opposite of the original Naruto, where it starts off extremely strong. Naruto is very obnoxious, but they manage to get you to sympathize with him immediately, and the first mission they go on is arguably where the series peaks for some people. Boruto by comparison takes a bit to get really good. I really didn't like the first major arc that is covered, and the first few missions Boruto goes on, like Boruto being the bodyguard, didn't manage to interest me. I didn't think the series got good until they introduced Kawaki. That's when things really started to escalate and get interesting. Which, by the way, this is easily the best new character they added. She's pretty, I think she's cool too, and shows a lot of promise, but I think Kawaki is hands down the coolest, most interesting character in Boruto, but more on that later. The beginning of Boruto tries really hard to differentiate Boruto from his father. They explicitly say this story is about me, not my father. But they also spend a lot of time showing you how Boruto is very much similar to Naruto as a kid, going as far as to have him wearing the same jacket in the opening arc. And sadly, I don't think Boruto is as likable as Naruto was. Complaining about a parent being too busy with work to spend time with his kids is pretty relatable and can be done well. But the problem is that we as the viewer know his dad grew up with no parental figure other than his teachers, while at least Boruto has a father that's alive. And as a first impression, it is just not a good look for Boruto at all. I'm not too fond of Boruto myself. He's alright, I guess. I've seen him get some unnecessary hate sometimes, though. And I've even seen comparisons of him versus the other kids in Naruto and how much better they were before. And I think the quote-unquote problem with Boruto as a character is that he honestly acts more appropriate for his age. I mean, he's a 12-year-old that got his arm snapped by someone that can slap Sasuke and Susanoo for him. The scream is super good and accurate, actually. I mean, hell, I'm in my 20s and this is how I sound when I stub my toe on the side of my bed. <laughs> Boruto is probably more of an actual 12-year-old than any of the 12-year-olds in the original series, and you can say this for pretty much everyone. Naruto had a lot of death and violence in it. These kids were doing some pretty gruesome stuff if you go back and watch it. It's probably not something an 8 year old should have been watching, but this was also the reason I thought Naruto was the coolest thing ever back in the day. Boruto by comparison is a lot more lighthearted in tone. There's not much violence and blood compared to the original series. OJ Naruto always had a lot of fun and playfulness in it, but they managed to mix it in with the serious tone of the show so well. The ratio of fun to seriousness in Boruto is much more sided towards fun, which isn't always a bad thing because I enjoy some of it. But it's lacking the rawness that the original had that made so many people fall in love with it. The characters and tone of Boruto aren't my main issues with the series, but rather they feel more of a byproduct of the actual problem that I have with Boruto, and that is the world. I really hate how industrialized they made the world. I get it, the world is at peace, the story takes place 15 or so years later in the future, and technology will undoubtedly make advancements in that time. But that doesn't mean I have to like it. 
It's the same problem I had with the original Avatar and Korra. I like the setting of the original a lot, and in Korra they introduced all these tanks and cars and stuff that just completely changed the whole vibe of the world that I didn't like, because I much prefer how it was before. And in Boruto, the technological advances made in the series is such an issue because of how important it is in the show. For starters, so many of the villains they fight are in some way, shape, or form a cyborg, that a majority of which have the ability to absorb people's jutsus, and the other villains they fight are the aliens from arguably the worst part about the original Naruto that can also absorb jutsus. Which this part I'm actually okay with, it's kind of making the best of a bad situation and Boruto tries to delve deeper into the parts of the original everyone hated and gives them more meaning, so I respect the attempt. I just think it's a shame that when something cool actually happens in Boruto, more often than not they're just beating on some absolute bozo of a villain taken away from the hype moment. And in a way, I kind of sympathize with Boruto. The original Naruto I feel like had some of the best antagonists in all of anime, and this is a tough act to follow. And none of the villains in Boruto even come close to characters like Itachi. And the few villains I do kind of enjoy come off as passable at best. One of my favorite things about the original was the diversity between the characters' abilities. They were also creative and diverse with stuff like Shadow Paralysis Jutsu, Ice Prison Jutsu, Puppet Jutsu, and Boner Jutsu to name a few. And in Boruto, they completely take this uniqueness away by developing these scientific ninja tools. Now everyone, even some non-ninjas, can use techniques like Shadow Paralysis Jutsu that were unique only to Shikamaru and his clan before. Now everyone can just do these jutsus on their arm gauntlets or iPads if they wanted to. I too can use Choju's expansion jutsu and increase my size so I won't have a micro penis anymore. And if so many people can do it, it's not special anymore. Naruto when it first started out was simple, clean, and creative. Everyone before were so unique for the most part, and it was so interesting to meet all these characters with their own special techniques that were unique to them alone, and in Boruto with the inclusion of scientific ninja tools, they made everything way too accessible. And in a way, the scientific tools are almost a necessary evil. They're put there to help with the power creep that eventually happened towards the end of the original Naruto that was one of the biggest problems the series had. Before, fights were much simpler and creative, and there was strategy involved with them. And obviously by the end of the series they were essentially just firing lasers that can destroy mountains at each other. And in Borto, it's actually nice to see them kind of go back to the roots of the series. Some fights have more strategy involved in them because almost every villain has the ability to negate any jutsu you use. And this makes the fights in turn much more strategic and hand-to-hand -hand combat heavy, solving the power creep problem and attempting to capture the greatness the original had. And sometimes it actually does work. Much in fights where they're simply beating the shit out of each other with mainly taijutsu is pretty cool. There's some okay strategic moments here like tricking your enemy into picking up a sword that drains their chakra, or the classic trick of making them think you're a shadow clone. There's some pretty cool fights here. They just don't compare to the highs the series used to have with stuff like Anytime Shikamaru fought, or even Naruto farting in Kiba's face for that matter. And while it's nice to see the series tone down the power levels by having so many villains being able to absorb any type of jutsus, it makes the story feel very repetitive very quickly. I found myself rolling my eyes a ton when they introduce another bad guy that can absorb jutsus limiting your options in the fight. And this was a problem in Naruto Shippuden as well. But if a few select people like Pain or Madara are doing it, I'm willing to look the other way. But when a scientist can just put on some armor a bit like a Mega Man villain and can now negate and absorb fireballs, I gotta draw the line. I do believe the scientific ninja tools are doing more harm than good. I was reading Boruto and I really had to stop and question. Does this guy really need to pull up and use a minigun like his Team Fortress 2? And what's the actual point of having ninja lightsabers? The only thing I liked about how the world advanced in Boruto is how there's a trading card game based on the ninjas from the OG series. This was actually cool as hell to see and was hitting all my nostalgia G-spots. And that's pretty much the biggest appeal that Boruto has going for it. As much as I hate how the world advanced in Boruto, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't cool to see these characters I quite literally grew up watching also grow up. I wouldn't call the show pure nostalgia bait, but this is probably the main reason you'll want to watch the show, and it's definitely my favorite part about it. It's really cool to see how these characters retreat into adult life and to see who married who. And it's because of this nostalgia factor that even makes some of the lighthearted filler that should be consumed in clips or a short burst, mind you, because there's way too much of it. It makes some filler scenes like Kid Naruto talking to Kid Boruto extremely wholesome 
wholesome to see. It's charming as hell to see Naruto and Sasuke being awkward fathers because they don't know what it's like. It's great to see how characters like Kakashi have it aged today and are basically the same person years later. It's nice to see how not just the teenage characters who had children, but even some characters who were a bit on the older side in the original series still look really really good all things considered. 8 year old me had the biggest crush on Tsunade for obvious reasons and I was happy to see she's just as perfect as I remember her. I also had a massive crush on Anko when they first showed her in the tuning exam and I was excited to see that... Oh. Yeah, honestly I could pass as a member of one of the six paths of down bad, that wouldn't stop me. My favorite form of nostalgia comes from Naruto himself. Can it see how he still visits the same small ramen shop he used to as a kid, but now that he's Okage, the place is much more popular, as well as him still using the same frog wallet is making me emotional. It's also really cute to see how Naruto's daughter is literally just Naruto's face pasted on a child Hinata's body, but aside from all the wholesome nostalgia, the highlights of Boruto are still going to be getting to see Naruto and Sasuke fight again. And as ridiculous as it may seem for Naruto to get another power up in the form of a new Ninetales transformation, it's actually pretty cool. It's kind of a throwback to the pure demonic form Naruto used to have. It looks really good. Every time Sasuke uses his Rinnegan to switch places, it's like the sickest thing ever. I never really liked the ludicrous turn the series took with planet destroying jutsus, but getting to see the nine-tailed fox wearing two snow armor is pretty stupid but absolutely raw as hell. Yeah, I can't even lie, Boruto might be alright just for this alone. But Naruto and Sasuke aside, watching a lot of the older characters come out of semi-retirement like Orochimaru fighting with a sword is pretty cool. Some of the fights in the series are genuinely pretty entertaining and well animated. A select few of the fights are actually top tier for any battle anime period. This is the case for even some of the anime only fights that I have no context for because I only read the manga. They still managed to be pretty great. This wasn't in the manga, but this Konohamaru fight is pretty raw all things considered. Damn, he really just kicked the kunai into his jaw like that. There's no blood, but you know what, maybe Boruto can get a little violent from time to time. Some of the fights are so good, they managed to convince me that Sakura is cool, and I can't think of a better compliment than that. A lot of the highlights for me came from the older cast, but that's not to say the kids don't have their moments as well. It's just a water clone, but watching Mitsuki slice his neck with a kunai is really dope. I think the only moments in the series that can rival Naruto and Sasuke are the fights that Boruto and his own rival, Kawaki, have. Kawaki is just built different from the rest of the cast. I feel like a lot of the problems the cast and Boruto undoubtedly all have will be living in their parents' footsteps. It's only natural considering we grew up with the originals. And I think a few of them, like Sarada and Mitsuki, stand out where they aren't just a younger Sakura, Sasuke, or Orochimaru. Sarada and Mitsuki manage to be very different from their parents and become more interesting because of that. But for some characters, they're literally just a younger version of their parents, both in their appearance and how they act. Kawaki doesn't have this problem. He's a truly fresh character. He's completely different from everyone else. A lot of the children, as well as the overall tone of the show, comes off as playful and lighthearted. Kawaki is slightly older than most of the other kids while also having an extremely dark past. He's pretty much like a character from the original Naruto series. He's a kid that's gone through some seriously messed up shit as a child and this makes him cool. Kawaki easily has some of my favorite moments in this series for me. He starts off as a bit of an antagonist but gets taken to the Leaf Village and mentored by Naruto. And it's really cool to see him develop as the series progresses. His father-son relationship he has with Naruto is truly beautiful to witness. He comes off as rude but quickly becomes very likable. And I'm really curious to see future developments for the series because the first thing shown in Boruto is them teasing Kawaki as the overall big villain, destroying the Leaf Village, and I'm genuinely interested to see how they get there. I think Kawaki has the best design, he's the most well-written, and he's the most likable character. He is a much darker and more serious character that reminds you a lot about why you fell in love with the original series. And for as much as I hate cyborgs absorbing jutsus, and Kawaki is literally just that, he's just so cool though, you can't hate him. This clip of him just absolutely blasting this loser of a villain made me fall in love with him immediately. And this was like the first thing he did when he was introduced to. When him and Barto fight using their literal god powers, it's actually really hype to see. Kawaki single-handedly managed to make me go from thinking Barto sucked to honestly enjoying it a ton. If you hate the happy-go-lucky tone that takes up a lot of Barto, you might end up enjoying it when they introduce Kawaki. The plot and overall quality takes a dramatic turn for the better when he's introduced. I'd even go as far as to recommend at least giving Barto a shot until you properly get introduced to him. The first couple of arcs in the manga can be a bit boring to go through in all honesty, but Kawaki is introduced in chapter 20, which isn't that bad and things get a lot more interesting after that. And in the anime, I'm sure he's introduced just as quickly. Kawaki ends up getting introduced in episode 189 of the anime. 
What the fu- What in the world was happening in the Boruto anime? My god. This series can't possibly be 90% filler, can it? I've only read the manga and seen a few clips, but I just hope the anime is at least decent for the most part. Or maybe this might be the worst case of, bro, it gets good later on, trust. But yeah, Boruto has a ton of problems and gets a lot of hate, but it's got some cool moments in it. I definitely recommend reading the manga or watching a super condensed version of the anime that only goes over the most important stuff. Kawaki is the best character, they got some really wholesome moments in it, and some of the fights are really cool. With a few interesting antagonists introduced in Boruto in the upcoming arc, it's weird and I thought I'd never say it, but I think I'm actually excited to see where Boruto is heading.